cars are awesome, but they're also super complicated. So naturally, I figured that if I could scale down the complexity, I could make one from scratch. The goal of this project is to make a simple, miniature RC car completely from scratch while also not using parts specifically made for RC cars or copying any pre-existing designs. First, I jumped into Onshape to start making a design. And of course, because all cars are basically just rectangles, that is exactly what I started with. I then did some research on designing helical gears for the drivetrain because I remember that they're supposed to have some advantage or something. I put the rectangle, the gears, and an axle together to get this neat CAD preview of how everything will interact. Next, I made some wheels. The best tires are generally made of rubber, and because I can't 3D print rubber or buy actual RC car tires, I improvised. I grabbed some old rubber LEGO tires and simply made these rims to fit inside of them. Some CAD later and all the parts are ready to be printed. Here are the time lapses that my printer got of all the parts. To start assembly, I'm going to put some bearings into the car for the rear axle. This piece here is where the front wheels attach to. I think it's the most interesting piece I made on this car because it was designed to be a print in place part. The two rods that the wheels pivot around have ball joints which allow a varying amount of camber depending on what degree to which the wheels are turned. I have no idea if this has any benefits or if it makes the car actually perform worse, but it looks sick so I went with it. I then measured the rear axle, which is a piece of 5mm diameter stainless steel, so that it would be centered, as well as putting on a gear to transfer power from the motor to the wheels. Next I glued down the servo, and being the professional that I am, I landed on using paper clips as steering linkages. Yeah, not so sure how this will turn out, it could definitely become something I have to revise in the future. Anyways, here's a quick time lapse of how I deformed and then reformed the paper clips. To wrap this up, I glued the steering platform to the main section of the body, put on the rear wheels, and finished connecting and securing all of the electronics. After briefly testing the car and taking those videos, the first problem popped up. Pretty quickly it became obvious that the 2 to 1 gear ratio on the motor was a very poor design. The motor doesn't have much torque and I had to replace it in the end and redesign the gears to have a gear reduction so that that wouldn't keep happening. I landed on a 2 to 3 gear ratio and also had to reconfigure the main chassis piece to adapt to the new gear diameters. I printed out the new parts and got right back to testing out the car. I wanted to know what kind of performance this car truly had, so I set up a test to figure out its acceleration. I placed two wood blocks 20 feet apart from each other and recorded the car accelerating from rest. I hadn't previously given the car quite so much throttle as I didn't want to break it. I didn't realize just how much torque this thing had with its new gear ratio, but it wasn't difficult to spin out, so I had to be very careful when I gave it throttle so that it would put down the best numbers but without losing control. This was my best time, so I reviewed the video seeing that it took the car 1.22 seconds to accelerate from rest and travel 20 feet. I did some math and found that the car's acceleration was roughly 8.19 meters per second squared, and that its velocity, when at 20 feet, was around 10 meters per second squared. That's 22.4 miles per hour in 1.22 seconds. I think those numbers are really impressive, and that they're likely due to the car's super low center of gravity and grippy wheels. 
Of course, the very next test that I did, I broke the car. The torque really messed this thing up because it was only held in place on the motor by some hot glue. What I could do is I could drill a little slit into the side of the motor shaft, like basically make a key for it. But it's so tiny, I don't want to mess it up. And this is my only like working motor left that's compatible. I would have to redesign the whole thing. Anyways, so I'm just going to try to use some CA glue because it's a lot stronger. And if that doesn't work, I'll have to figure something out, I guess. This definitely made a difference. I did donuts, drifts, and full throttle accelerations without having the motor gear slip or break free thanks to the stronger glue. With that taken care of, it was time to do the finishing touches on this car and call it good. The car looks pretty cool as is, but it feels like it's lacking something. A wing. I made this CAD model and then started to print it out. For the RC car's final drive, I took it onto a road and got some sick footage from the back of a truck. All things considered, that went surprisingly well, until it got ran over by a car. Yeah, that's the end of this video, but I don't think this design has reached its potential yet. There's definitely a lot that I could change to make this thing better, so if you made it this far in the video, please leave a comment suggesting what you think I should incorporate into the design, and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video on the car. Thanks for watching.